through designing a questionnaire. So as I told you earlier that in case of questionnaire based survey, uh, the respondent himself or herself has to take the responsibility of the questionnaire. Yes, there is no one in between. So we have to look into this aspect and we have to uh, start with what is a questionnaire. So it is a formalized set of questions for obtaining information from the respondents in a survey. If the list of questions pertaining to the survey under consideration is self-administered, that is filled up by the respondent himself or herself, then it is called as a questionnaire. However, if the interviewer accompanies the questionnaire or the list of questions, asks the question from the respondent and accordingly fills it up in presence of the respondent, then it is called as a schedule. Whatever be the type of implementation, a questionnaire or a schedule generally has three objectives. So what are the objectives? Uh, first objective is to translate the information needed into a set of specific questions that the respondent can and shall answer. So this is very two important words, can and shall answer. Can means he shall know the answer and shall means that the individual is expected to give an answer to this question. Sometimes he can answer, but he may not answer or he shall not answer. Not that type. Some answers which I can answer and I will, uh, ex I am expected in normal situation that I will also respond to it. Such type of questions are there. It is based on the information that the researcher wants to extract from the respondent. It should uplift, motivate and encourage the respondent to get involved to cooperate and to complete the interview. You may find in a particular schedule or a questionnaire that similar type of questions are asked in different ways and uh, this might make the survey lengthy and boring and you might not be find any interest in solving this or answering to these questions after a particular stage. So this should not happen in a questionnaire. Whatever information to be collected very precisely the questions are to be placed but correctly so that uh, um, the respondent understands the questions and he can and such questions should be asked which a person can answer. Means you don't have to put much effort for answering that. Don't take a quiz or a, uh, on him for which he has to spend some time to get an answer to this. Uh, and uh, so that people cooperate and uh, allow you to complete the interview. To minimize the response error, as questionnaires are the main source of response errors. Response errors we will see in later stage how response error comes into it. Sometimes questions are so um, sensitive that people are actually uh, giving a different way or putting the response in it in a way that it is not analyzable or it is not understandable. It makes the situation very vague. Actual information is not coming out. Uh, these are uh, some of the ways. Sometimes the question is uh, very difficult and the people are not having information about them and they cannot answer. Sometimes questions are ambiguous. Ambiguous <coughs> uh, that, uh, for example, uh, why did I, uh, why did you purchase this watch? Why did you purchase this watch? Some people may answer it in like this that I wanted to purchase a watch because that was a necessity for me. Some people may tell that I came to know about this watch from my friend, so I got interested to purchase this. Now, this why question is leading to all different types of answers. They are not telling the reason why you have purchased the watch, but rather some people are telling some information which might be a very good answer to a question that from whom did you come to know about our store or about this watch. So this type of answers will also come. So when the question is very broad, it is not specific, it is not precise, then a whole lot of information will come and this will lead to response error. So these three are the basic objectives of designing a questionnaire. First uh, is that obviously what information you require. Second is to motivate people to participate in the survey. And third is uh, to uh, minimize the response error. Now, in <coughs> question designing process, there are a, as many as eight steps which you have to take into consideration. First is the specify the information needed. Number two, specify the type of interview method. These things are very, you have to make these things points clear at the beginning when you design the questionnaire. Because depending on the type of the interview, the question will be formed. 
in same purpose, same objective of an interview, but it depends from in which way you will conduct the interview. Well, whether it will be an email interview, whether it will be a postal interview, whether it will be a telephonic interview, whether it will be a scheduled type of interview, all these things determines the way in which questionnaire will be designed. Determining the content of individual questions, how an individual question should look like, uh, what should be the contents of an individual question, keeping into mind the objective of your study or what is the objective of the survey. Uh, then uh, coming uh, broad, uh, we have this uh, uh, overcome unwillingness and inability to answer. People are unwilling, they are unable to answer. These two things we have to take into consideration that our question does not uh, lead to the unwillingness and inability of the person to answer. Next, decide the question structure. Decide the question wording, arrangement of questions, and uh, uh, finally the form and layout of the in which the questions are arranged in the questionnaire. So these are few things which you require to decide when we design the questionnaire or before we actually design the questionnaire. Some of these are you have to decide before uh, taking the questionnaire designing and sometimes during the questionnaire designing. This has to be done. That means before the survey starts, when you make your questionnaire, some of these eight factors should be taken care of. We look into them one by one. First, we look at how to specify the information needed. With the progress of research project, the type of information required becomes more vivid. Generally, you see, if you look at a business research, I am not taking about an academic research. Uh, but when you want to take a business research, first way you have to do is that you identify the problem. And then you know that this is sometimes problem is quite vivid. Sometimes you have to find out the problem itself. Okay. Anyway, so then we need that, okay, to reach to a solution to this particular business problem. Uh, what are the information that we need to have? from the organization, from the company, from the customers, maybe from the employees, depending on the situation. Now, sometimes we, if we understand the problem already, we know that problem, suppose in an organization, often there are some uh, disappointments of the employees and often they go for a strike. Uh, this actually hampers the progress of the institution because, uh, or the I mean, industry, uh, because a lot of days are there where no production takes place. Uh, this ultimately has an influence over the profit of the organization. Now, these are the problems uh, that are quite vivid and we require to go for a solution to this. Now, sometimes we go for a literature uh, in, in uh, academic research, this is a must, but for business research, uh, sometimes it is uh, important, sometimes it is not. What happens in a literature review that we study similar other problems. We consult similar other problems and try to find out that why these problems came into existence in those organizations or what are the theory behind this type of problems. Is there a theory about employees dissatisfaction leading to strikes, etc. It is important to identify the target population as the characteristics of the respondent influences the questions to be asked. Now, if in an organization there is lot of strikes, days without work and we want to conduct a survey to know what is the reason for that. Obviously your target population will be those dissatisfied people who are going for the strike. In addition to that you need to also contact the managers and the administration to understand their point of view. So, you, now to understand the, the two different groups, your type of question would placed before the employees and the employer, they might not be same, they might be different. So, obviously you require at least two sets of questions. Now, once again, the problem of the employees, all problems might not be same. Different people might have different problems. Those who are at the official level, they may have one type of problem. Well, Those who are below a particular level, they may have some other types of problems. 
Um, association may take up both the problems simultaneously and uh, are going for a strike. So, so to understand the problems of these two groups of employees, you might require another set of questions. So that's why it is very important to understand the respondents who are your respondents. That is the target population from whom the information is to be collected. Specifying the information may lead to lower no opinion responses. Sometimes you find that in a questionnaire. There are some questions in which no opinion comes out because people don't fall in that category. Maybe some problems are very specific to the what is the grade B employees that means uh, below this uh, means below officers level those employees specific to those employees. Now when you put the same question to the officers, the officers might not have any response there because they don't fall in that category. They don't undergo that type of things. For a very simple example, suppose I ask you that are you a smoker? Suppose your answer is yes. Then I have a set of questions. How regularly do you smoke? Which brand of cigarette do you pick up? Do you find any health issues uh, because of your smoking? Are your family members uh, satisfied with your this smoking habit? No, people are not uh, going uh, studying this uh, means people are uh, people, you but now lot of questions are there which comes when you are a smoker. If you tell that no I am not a smoker then all these responses like all these questions like how regularly do you smoke which brand these questions does not arise. So there is no response over there. You don't have to give any response over there. Now this type of things happens quite regularly if you don't identify your target population properly in a questionnaire this survey. Now go to the second point uh, as you can see remember that this we had identified eight points here. We go to the second point now specify the type of interview method. So specify the type of interview method. The type of interview should be considered while designing the questionnaire. If it is a schedule then the informant interacts with the investigator and also can see and read the questions. So questions can be of complex type and questions can be varied also because there is one individual who will make the explanation. In telephonic surveys the information interacts with the investigator but cannot see the questions so it should be short and simple. The mailed questionnaire is so self-administered and so it will, should be simple and detailed instruction may be provided for different types of questions. Suppose I have a multiple choice type of question. There I should give that there will be under each question there will be five options you have to take the most appropriate one. Mm. Some responses may be checkbox type responses where under a question there may be many options. But you cannot, uh, you can take more than one also, no issues. That is called check checkbox type responses. It is uh, opposite to MCQ. MCQ only one out of four or five. In checkbox type questions, any number, you can tick in all of them also. For example, you have problem in heart, yes, no, kidney, yes, no, you have uh, blood sugar problems, yes, no, you have uh, health, um, what is that, blood pressure problems, yes, no. So many diseases are there. One may have all the diseases. So tick, tick, tick in all, all cases. Checkbox all. So that is also can be possible. So whatever be the key situation. In mailed questionnaire, these questions when the pattern of question changes, the description should be there. That this set of questions from question number 21 from question, to question number 27, these are multiple choice. You have to tick only one out of the five options or four options which is more appropriate to you. Question number 28 to 35, they are checkbox type question. You can choose more than one options also. So this type of description should be there. And uh, if some term is used, which is little bit technical, you may give an explanation to that also. So that when the person fills it up, he feels that every description is there. He don't have to go to the dictionary or ask someone to get a response to that. Telephonic survey is very interesting. Telephonic survey. Telephonic survey, you don't have to uh, interact with the respondent. Uh, 
sorry, telephonic survey, what happens? One person calls you wants to take a survey. You don't know that person. There is no questions in front of you. You don't know what will be the next questions. The next question and after that, which question will be asked? Whether the person is at all genuine or not. She is telling that she is calling from Axis Bank, but whether she is really calling from Axis Bank or she is a fraud, I don't know. I don't have any idea. So she is asking that whether I want some loan, but that way she may actually take the information about my financial condition. I am not sure. So telephonic interview, this is the problem. If someone is calling you, don't know the person. The type of questions that she will be asking one after another, that is also not known to you. And uh, obviously you cannot see the person. So that is a telephonic interview is that way very dangerous. Uh, however, in schedule, there is a person who accompanies the questionnaire. So you can see the person, you can look into his eyes and understand whether he is telling a lie. Maybe uh, if you are a good uh, reader. But then you can ask different types of other questions. Why did you come here? How did you get my address? Who told that I will give you the information? How do you know that I am an employee of such and such organization or I, I, have a, I am a customer of such and such organization? organization you can ask them many questions to the identity of that individual uh, uh, once uh, done so once this is done then at this stage we can actually also take the help of uh, uh, we can see ask him that show me the list of questions that you will be asking so in the schedule he asks something i told you whether that is important he asked me uh, are you married i told you why is this important for your survey, yes, yes. Uh, show me your schedule. Where in your schedule it is written that the person is married or not? Here's a question number four. Oh, acha, acha. Okay, fine. Thank you. Okay, please go ahead. So you have different ways. You don't know you can talk with the person. You can see the list of questions. But telephonic interview, neither the person is there nor the question list is there. In mail questionnaire method, the person is not there, but the list of questions is there. So that way, out of the three, telephonic service seems to be a very dangerous one. And this is we take up this uh, this one we take uh, the last uh, of the slides for today because students want to sit for an exam. First is what is the content of individual questions? First is that whether the question should be simple. Now simple means it should not be ambiguous. It can be taken at the literal value. What is written here, that is the meaning, not something else, is the meaning of the thing. Now, the next is whether the question is necessary. You will find that any form you fill up, form is also a type of question. Whenever you, uh, whenever you, have a, you took admission in the course, you must have filled up a form. And uh, that is also nothing but a questionnaire. It is just taking information from you. Often you will find that father's name is there. Now think of a situation. What at all father's name has to do? Now you want to do an MBA, executive MBA, fine. They may ask you that which company you work. Because this is for working people. So they may want to clarify. But what is your father's name? What the father's name has to do? And even in our country, some of the forms, they ask for mother's name also. Means what my parents' name has to do? Actually, it is more... Um, genuine uh, that to ask mother's name means out of the parents if one name is to be asked that should be the name of the mother what has father to do mother uh, but then in our society is a patriarch society probably that's why they ask the father father's name uh, anyway so uh, now to uh, people has become uh, understood the situation and mother's name is good enough but earlier father's name used to be a very important thing if a person cannot tell it's his father's name that was considered to be something very disgraceful. Now, uh, I have an example in this regard. Father's name means once a, a German person, he came to a seminar. Means uh, actually I met him in a seminar. He was in India attending different seminars. Then I just told him that why don't you uh, come and uh, deliver some lectures in my university. He told that okay. So he accompanied me. So he came. I booked a hotel for him.
Now, in the hotel, he went. He, the hotel wala is asking him his father's name. What is their father's name? Or he has given a register where there is one column father's name. He is asking me what my father has to do. My father died long back, ten years back, in Germany. Means even if I write my father's name, what he is going to do with my father's name? I told her, oh, don't be so argumentative. Only Indians can be argumentative. That's why there is a book, the Argumentative India. So you, Chana, do please write whatever they ask. Okay. So he, but he was not. I also was thinking, yes, what his father's name has to do here? मतलब रात को दारूपी के हंगामा करे तो पापा को कंप्लेन करना है कैसे करोगे वो बेचारा मर गया है और जर्मनी कौन फोन करेगा उसका पापा को और फोन भी कर भी दिया पापा जिंदा भी है कर भी दिया तो पापा कौन सा एक्शन लेगा सो दीज थिंग्स एब्सर्ड बट इज द क्वेश्चन एट ऑल नेसेसरी कैन क्वेश्चन बी शॉर्ट एंड सम पीपल दे आस्क सो बिग क्वेश्चन दैट यू एक्चुअली कीप ऑन रीडिंग द क्वेश्चन टू थ्री टाइम्स टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट ही एक्चुअली वॉन्ट्स Now is the question double barrel? Double barrel questions in a questionnaire should always be avoided. For example, do you think Boost is a tasty and energy drink? Now look at this question. Where is the problem in the question? Do you think Boost is a tasty and energy drink? Now currently I am stopping uh, sometimes. Uh, it will be it might be understanding that i am eating something actually i am drinking boost do you think boost is a tasty and energy drink now yes understood okay no understood but suppose i think boost boost is tasty but i don't feel any energy after drinking boost so i want to tell that yes boost is tasty but it is not an energy drink it does not give me energy then what shall i answer yes or no or Both, or say someone asks that okay, boost is an energy, tasty and energy drink. I don't find any taste in boost, but when I drink boost after coming from the university, I feel. Mm, I, I earlier I used to feel sleepy, but when I drink boost, then I feel that no, uh, my sleep has run away somewhere, so I feel a little bit energetic. So boost is an energy drink, but it is not at all tasty. In that case, what answer I will give you, give to this? So this is actually a double-barrel question. that means two questions in one question it should be divided into two questions like do you think boost is a tasty drink yes no do you think boost is an energy drink two questions but clapped into one making a double barrel question so it is good to decrease the number of questions in a questionnaire but not with double barrel questions is the question or negative or double negative now sometimes this creates means in uh english also and in other languages uh, like hindi also <sighs> for example mai beiman nahi hu be is a actually negative things beiman be ichat jiska ichat nahi hai be ichat beiman jiska iman nahi hai beiman be is a negative word now mai beiman nahi hu isse to acha bolna ki mai imandar hu ya mera iman hai means actually double negative is used to make it positive negative and negative makes positive negative and negative makes positive main beiman nahi is one negative be is another negative main beiman nahi hu isse to acha bol do ki main main imandar hu ya mera paas iman hai now this type of questions when start coming in the questionnaire may they it becomes very difficult फॉर एग्जाम्पल जैसे एक हमारे कॉलेज डेज में एक लड़के को मतलब मेरा एक फ्रेंड को लड़की को प्रपोज करना है कैसा प्रपोज किया ये सच नहीं कि मैं तुमसे प्यार नहीं करता बल्कि चला गया तो लड़की काफी देर सोचती रही ये सच नहीं कि मैं तुम्हें प्यार नहीं करता सच नहीं कि मैं तुम्हें प्यार नहीं करता निगेटिव निगेटिव मीन्स पॉजिटिव तो ये मतलब मुझसे प्यार करता है ओ माय गॉड ही प्रपोज मी ओ माय गॉड उसको पांच मिनट बाद समझ में आया नाउ व्हाट हैपेंस यू सी व्हेन यू पुट दिस टाइप ऑफ थिंग्स इन अ क्वेश्चन एयर द पीपल गेट्स कंफ्यूज्ड बिकॉज़ व्हेन द पीपल ट्राई टू फिल अप अ क्वेश्चन एयर दे वांट टू डू इट क्विकली बिकॉज़ दे और भी काम करने को होता है सो इन दैट केस नॉट टू कंफ्यूज द रिस्पोंडेंट फॉर एग्जांपल हियर आई आई गिव एन लाइव एग्जांपल ऑफ अ डबल नेगेटिव यू सी ओके i uh, took the photograph from delhi metro 
in delhi metro they gave uh, when the metro started i don't know when now the instructions are there or not uh, but when the metro started initially i think in 2004 or uh, 2002 or 2000 uh, 2004 3 i think delhi metro started and uh, they uh, they gave uh, one uh, this uh, means different do's and don'ts instructions were there out of that do not travel without a valid ticket they could have write travel with valid ticket do's me ghusa dena tha usko travel on with valid ticket only likh do do not travel without a valid ticket do not travel travel nahi karna without a valid ticket matlab valid ticket leke travel karna hai that means travel with a valid ticket english to hi hota hai translation mein travel with a valid ticket तो इसमें देखो डू नॉट ट्रेवल विदाउट ए वेल्यू टिकट कितना कंफ्यूज करता है बिकॉज दिस इज ए डबल नेगेटिव स्टेटमेंट तो वेन एवर इन ए क्वेश्चन डबल नेगेटिव स्टेटमेंट कमिंग कम्स इन देन इट इज लिटिल अम्बिगुअस दिस क्रिएट्स लॉट ऑफ कंफ्यूजन नेक्स्ट इज द क्वेश्चन लीडिंग टू एन ओबियस आंसर दैट मीन्स लीडिंग क्वेश्चन यू मस्ट हैव सीन इन द मूवीज इन कोर्ट ट्रायल दे टेल दैट दिस इज अ लीडिंग क्वेश्चन यर ऑनर इन सम क्वेश्चन हुज आंसर इज ओबियस For example, uh, is killing unborn babies a good practice? Here the word "killing unborn babies" killing. So who will tell that uh, yes, it is a good practice? If it is told, is abortion a good practice? Now the word abortion does not have in it any ne- anything negative. But when you use the word "killing," then it means uh, something dangerous is going to take place. So is killing unborn babies a good practice? so that is so not a good thing is abortion a good practice no problem with this is killing unborn baby is a good practice that is everyone will tell me because what killing is there so that is becomes a leading question so when you choose your words this type of word should not be used which may make the question a leading question avoid words like no one nobody everybody never in the question is it creates obvious answer so sometimes never i never lie in my life everyone will tell that no this is false because sometimes you have to tell a lie so this type of words actually creates leading question everybody likes roses generally people like rose uh, but uh, everybody may not like rose kisi ko rajnigandha pyara lagta hai Is there a prestige bias in the question? Prestige bias. Some questions which actually creates a prestige bias. You will not deny it because if you deny it, this may be uh, maybe that that hampers your prestige. And many a times because of saving their prestige, people tell a lie. For example, earlier I used to work in a college, so uh, there was a cricket match between the affiliating university and the college teachers. and the affiliating university teacher so we were in the match so some people were means uh, both the team players were there now uh, i met one means in the pavilion i was standing near another player of my opponent team i asked that uh, sir which department you were teaching he told that i am teaching in the mass communication department okay very nice sir when year uh, which year did you join he told this and this oh, okay okay uh, how did you feel here oh it's very good nice department is very good oh, okay no he told like this mm, so which paper you teach i teach television ha huh? television yeah mass communication we have to teach like me someone is still teaching television someone is teaching radio 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 bhi padhna aata hai ha radio some people is teaching like uh, newspaper 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 bhi aisa syllabus mein hai ha bilkul hai acha acha theek hai okay okay so usne mujhe bahut gyan diya बाद में जब आफ्टर सम एंड सो मेनी डेज व्हेन आई आई जॉइंड द यूनिवर्सिटी आई फाउंड दैट ही इज अ टेक्निकल स्टाफ ऑफ दैट डिपार्टमेंट मास कम्युनिकेशन डिपार्टमेंट एंड व्हेनेवर देयर इज प्रोग्राम इन यूनिवर्सिटी ही डज द वीडियो रिकॉर्डिंग बट व्हेन ही आई टॉक टू हिम दिस इज ही गिव अ अपीयरेंस दैट ही इज एट लीस्ट एन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर नाउ दिस इज एक्चुअली प्रेस्टिंग वाइज सो क्वेश्चंस इन द क्वेश्चन आर शुड नॉट बी इन सच अ वे दैट दे आर रेज एनी टाइप्स ऑफ प्रेस्टिज बायस so if you have any question when you may ask me now 